Okay. So what we're going to do today, 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 you guys, is go over the setup of our Facebook business manager. But as I was mentioning, after speaking to thousands of, of agents, most, if I ask someone, have you ran a Facebook ad? Most will say, yeah, David, I've boosted a post, right? I put the, I put the post on my business page and I click this blue button. I boosted a post. Most think that's an actual ad when it's not at all. That is not an ad at all. Um, that's one way. There's three ways really people would try to do this. One way is boosting the post. That's what you guys never want to do. You don't want to do that because of the tracking. There's no tracking that goes along with it. And that's why we're going to set up our business manager to, business manager today is because of all the tracking, which I'll explain as we go through. But boosting a post, you don't want to do it that way. Another way people would do it is they'll simply come into their ads manager. Let me, um, let me show you the actual ads manager. Most will come in, they'll come over here to the top or they'll go to their business suite. Um, but it, as I come to the news feed, I can come over here to the left. If I click on see more, I'll see ads manager. So the second way people try to do it is they, they'll run the ad through this, this ads manager, right? By default, we all have an ads manager. So if you have a, a personal page, if you have a business page, by default, you have an ads manager. So this is the second way. When I speak to agents and I say, hey, have you ever ran a Facebook ad? They'll say, yes, David, I run it through my ads manager. And, they'll, and, and they're referring to this one account, your quote unquote ads manager. The reason why you don't want to run it here is, again, because of the tracking. What everyone fails, and, and it's not just agents, it's small business owners in general, based on experience, based on speaking to so many of them, they'll run it through the ads manager. But the reason why you don't want to do it that way is because of the tracking. When it comes to Facebook ads, 99% of it, you guys, is about the tracking. 99% of it, just like with Nicole and I, she was like, damn, David, Apple, right before you guys run, she's like, Apple is crazy. They're tracking us by the second. The what, what did you say, Nicole? Like we were pulling up a website and she was seeing it. I was pulling up a website on my end and she was seeing it on her cell phone. Yeah, like he was like, putting up an LA.gov website and I went to type in like SC.gov and LA.gov. His exact thing came up on my so, phone. <laughs> so tracking is freaking everything. And I don't look at it because I'm a, I'm a marketer, right? I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur just like you guys. I don't look at it from the negatives. Like I, I actually look at that from the positives. Like when it comes to ads, we're really only trying to show our ad to people who are engaging. So, so those of you that are surfing online and you're browsing different websites, and, and then you leave and then you go to you go to Facebook or you go to Instagram and you see an ad from that actual website or you see an ad from that red handbag that you were looking at. It's like, dude, some people will get freaked out when it's like, man, no, like that's actually a good thing. You were the one looking at it. Right. So so all targeting is, is getting back in front of people that 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 engaged, whether they watched a video that you put out as an ad, whether they clicked and they went over to a website that you have set up as your ad, whatever is going on with that engagement needs to be tracked on the on the advert from the advertisers, you know, point point of view. So when you're doing it from just the ads manager, you don't have any of that capability. You can't track anything. There's no custom audiences, which I'll explain what all that is. But there's no there's no pixel data, and all this stuff is important because as you guys go out there and start running ads for seller leads, for buyer leads, you have to and 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 you start putting out your 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 hardworking dollar, right? You you start really spending some money. You you better make sure that you're getting a bang for that buck, and it happens with tracking. Ninety nine percent of Facebook advertising. This is this is really the the bottom line of today's call. Ninety nine percent of Facebook advertising is all about the tracking. So when you're boosting a post, you're not able to track. When you're running it at, through the ads manager, you're not able to track. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the business manager. The business manager allows us to track everything. So as I'm going through my news feed, so here's my news feed as I'm just kind of seeing what my friends are posting, and then I come across a sponsored ad. This right here, the fact that I paused is being tracked. As I click on see more, I'm being tracked. And I'm not necessarily being tracked from just Facebook. Yes, Facebook's tracking me, but this guy, Steve, because I know who this guy is. This guy's a top, top marketer. I know he knows what the hell he's doing here. What he's doing on the back end through his business manager is he's setting up custom audiences. So he has an audience, one specific audience set up for those that clicked. So boom, right away, I'm in that audience. Another audience would be for those who actually click learn more, go over to the page, land, but let's say I don't do anything. Let's just say I'm here. I don't enroll now. I'm just here. The fact that I landed here, it's tracked. 
right? Now, why is that so powerful? And I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of, of, of a listing. Let's say, for example, that was a property. I click, I come straight to this one page. I read, get instant access to the price and photos of this property. It's a simple web page. But let's say, for example, I don't click. I don't opt in. I, I, I may click the blue button, but I don't enter my name and email. I did not opt in. That's being tracked. So why is that so important? If I'm the one advertising and I'm the one spending money, that's someone I want to get back in front of. So yes, they saw my ad, they clicked, but for whatever reason, they did not opt in. There was interest there, man. Like whether you, they want to look at it that way or not, or the way that, whether you guys see it that way or not, there was interest. People are clicking on, on stuff that we're interested in. Now, every now and then we'll click on random stuff, right? But chances are the majority, there was some interest. They just didn't fill out the form. That's an audience. So that would be an audience. Let's say this is a listing, right? That's a listing. That would be an audience of, and let's say this is right here in the link, you see 777 Plaza Boulevard. The name of this custom audience in our business manager would be named 777 Plaza Boulevard web page visitor only. So now I have this data. And the way you look at this is just buckets. Everything that's going on with an ad all we're doing is segmenting the people and putting them in specific but buckets. Here's an another example. This is a video. Let's say I was running this video as an actual ad. This video is three minutes and 11 seconds long. What I'm able to do through your business manager, and that's the third way people run ads, and that's the only way I'm going to teach you guys to run ads, is through your business manager. That's what we're going to do today is we're going to set up our business manager. And it's for these reasons is that now let's say, okay, three minutes and 11 seconds. This person sat here and watched it for a minute, and then they left. This video right here, 244. This person sat here and watched it for seven seconds, eight seconds, nine seconds, 10 seconds, and then may have left. But the data, the fact that I captured that viewer of a 10-second viewer is everything, especially when I start running targeted ads, especially when I'm targeting my local farm. Right. That's what this is all about is getting getting targeting our local area, the few zip codes that you guys are farming, but but making sure that you're capturing the data of everything that's going on, because these are people that that need to see you again. Yes, I put out this this video and let's say I was talking about an open house come up this weekend. The person did not watch the whole 244. They did not even click on the button, but 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 22 seconds. That's a good enough time for that person to recognize my face. So now as I put that viewer in a custom audience in a bucket and I'll, I'll name that custom audience, those who watched my blue sweater open house video for 40 seconds, they go in an audience. And so now again, as I go run another ad, I'm going to retarget that audience. So again, 99% of all this stuff is about creating these custom audiences and, and retargeting those who have watched or clicked. That's how you create that local brand, like on steroids. That's how you create that omnipresence in your freaking backyard. Like it's powerful. And again, that's why when you're clicking on different random websites and all of a sudden you see an ad from that company on Facebook or whatever, that's powerful. So people need to see you multiple times before they become indoctrinated. Once they see you three, four, five times, especially in video form, especially in video form, if it's not video, then what I recommend putting out, putting out, putting out images of yourself. What a lot of agents will do is they'll put out, you know, photos of beautiful homes. If you're running an ad on a listing, of course, you need to show the freaking home. An open house, of course, you need to show the home. But if you're running ads on, let's say, giving away a seller guide, which is what I'm going to teach you guys how to do where you're just running ads, educating homeowners on what it takes to sell, getting them to click and come download your seller guide, right? So, so if, you're, if you're educating people and you're, and you're targeting that local area and you're capturing these people who are watching stuff, that's how people become indoctrinated because they start to see you over and over and over. And because you're a local realtor, you're a local business owner, you, because you work down the street, that's what becomes that that's how that person becomes indoctrinated and indoctrinated means that that individual after seeing you it could be a video it could be a photo of you not a not of a beautiful house a photo of you a headshot of you they need to see you right as people continue to see you that indoctrination kicks in and we're not talking 15 times we're talking literally four or five times after i keep scrolling through and i keep seeing this person four to five times i'm going to recognize that face right? That's indoctrination. And that means that that person ends up thinking that they know you, 
they think that they, they, they feel like they like you and they feel like they can trust you. They feel like they want to do business with you because they, they keep seeing you, right? And that's what this is all about. But none of that can happen. None of this tracking, none of the data, none of that can happen, you guys, without the business manager, right? So that's what we're going to get into today. Today. So who wants to share their screen? Let me, let me, let me stop share. Who wants to share their screen? Anybody? Go for Nicole. it. Fine. How do I do it? Awesome. Share your screen. How do I do that? <laughs> so right below, you'll see that. Go green. down to the bottom. Yeah, you'll see that that green. Share screen. screen. Yes. So I'm going to walk you through. We're going to literally set up yours right now. And, and the options here, desktop one, whiteboard, iPhone, iPad, Safari. Let's try that one. Desktop one. Yeah, yeah perfect. So yeah, you're on a computer, right? So it should be Safari. Uh, did that work? No. So to the left, click on see more. And some, some have a business manager set up. It's just not fully, fully optimized, which is what we're going to do today. Um, and then some don't. So we'll see if you actually have it set up. Just go all the way back up and you'll see um, you'll see see more right below events. Oh, that one. More. And then let's click on, I guess you can you don't have ads manager, but let's click on ads. Let's see if we can get to the um to the ads manager from from the ad tab. And this should take us into the business suite, which is like a like a newer version. But at the top, right, right in the right where you see facebook.com forward slash dream homes, type in business.facebook.com. Business.facebook.com. Should I delete that part? Yeah, just delete the whole thing. And let's just see if, if you um if you can get to it, get to it. Just business.facebook.com. Sorry, yeah, I'm only one-handed right now. Actually, delete the whole thing. Delete the whole thing and, and type yeah. in business.facebook.com. Business. And, and don't get any of that last part. Yeah, just business.facebook.com. This will take us back to see if you actually have a business manager set up. And if you don't, then that's even better. We'll just start from scratch. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I do. Okay, perfect. Okay, so, so click on, just X out of this part. And then click on all tools to the left. This is the new business suite, but this is not where you'll run ads from either. Um, and then over here, let's scroll down and let's go down to, yeah, see so you have you have page settings. Do you see business settings? Go ahead and go to, um, you can you can, you can go, to, go to ads manager. Yeah, click on ads manager and then we can get to the business settings from there. And if you don't have it set up, then it'll just, it'll kick us to, to set it up. It'll push us towards setting it up. So again, what I tried to explain earlier, number one, someone will boost a post. Don't ever do that again. Most will try to run an ad through the ads manager, which is this right here. And the business manager, once we set that up, it's going to look just like this, but it's a different account. It'll look like this, but, but in this case, it's just your ads manager. We want to go a step further again, which is the business manager. So click on the three lines at the top and you should see um, right yeah, to the left. Yeah. Click on that and go to your um, business settings. And this right here will either again, push us to set one up or show us that you have one. Yeah, see, so you actually have one, which is that one, Caitlin Sells Charleston. So that is your business manager. It's just none, none of it's set up, which is which is good. And, and, and that's what we're going to do today. So for those of you that, 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 yeah, so hopefully you guys caught that. We came to the ads manager. We clicked on the three lines. We came to business settings. And, and, and if you, if you don't see your, on your end, if you don't have one set up, which, which she does, this is it right here. Then all it would have done is pushed you to a page that, that required you to set one up. And then once you name it, then you click the button and it'll take you straight here. So this, this is the beginning part of it all right here. So this is your business manager. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to simply um, at the top, right where all your bookmarks are, can you create a folder and, and let's name it, let's name it FB business manager. So right there at the top where all your bookmarks are. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh -huh. just go ahead and right click and actually, no, don't, don't, don't start it yet, but right there in the white space next to meet Caitlin Miller, you have these bookmarks, maybe right there in the white space, just yeah. right click. Yeah. To the right, right click right there in the white space. Yeah. And then just add folder. So what we're going to do here is this stuff can seem super overwhelming. You guys like super, super, there's so much stuff to, to click on. I'm going to really dumb it down for you guys and really make this super simple because at the end of it, there's only seven tabs, seven buttons, seven things you'll ever click on in this ads manager, in this what? business manager, whatever you want to call it. There's only seven things you'll ever click on. Where so, are, I don't know how you guys even got here. What did you click on to get to this page? Because I can't get there. I don't remember. We went to no. what you can go to 
go to business.facebook.com. Yep. And and it'll either it'll either push you to a page that that is asking you to set it up, or uh-huh. or it'll take you to the ads manager where all you do is click on the three lines, which is what she did, and she clicked on business settings. Business settings. Ads manager business settings. Okay, getting there. So my business um, ads manager was mm-hmm. hacked and they took the administration away from me. So I can't access or change anything in there. Reach out to me, Teresa. Let's, let, I'll jump on with you one-on-one and I'll, I'll tear it apart and look at it for you. I okay. need this too. Okay. The same thing yeah. happened to me. <laughs> Yeah. So David at canteromedia.com or, or actually I'll, I'll email, I'll message it to you guys here in the chat. Um, actually, I'll give you guys a different email. So yeah, socialagentmastery.com. Okay. So if you guys need anything, like I'll jump on with you guys one-on-one and, and I'll, I'll look at the account and we'll do it together. Okay, thank okay, you. So, so email me there. Um, so, so if, if, if you caught what we what we just went over, we we got to, we went to business.facebook.com. It took us to the ads manager. We clicked on the three line the three lines at the top, and we went to business settings. This is the business settings. So again, if your guys don't look like this, then it would have pushed you to a page that that required you to set it up. Once you simply name it, then you're then you're 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 forwarded here. So this is the page right here, business settings. So what we want to do is simply let's bookmark. Go to yeah, you could bookmark it from here. Um, so hit the star right there at the top, uh, Caitlin. And, and this one's gonna be business settings. So it's, it's right there, but take it out of that folder and put it in the, in the FB manager folder. So drop that folder. Yeah, let's, let's put it yeah, in that other one. folder. Oh, okay. FB business manager. Okay, so this is your business settings. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we want to click on pages to the left and make sure that your page is connected. So the way you wanna, wanna look at this is simply, again, you have, we have the boosted post, we have the ads manager, but now we're taking it a step further and setting up the business manager. The way you guys can look at it from, from a real estate perspective is you have, as you start off in real estate, you're an agent and then you eventually become a broker. And then what, what do most, even, even a lot of agents before they become bro- become brokers, what do they normally do? They go create an LLC, right? This is your LLC. The business manager is your LLC. So with that being said, and that viewing it in that perspective, it's still you that's tied to the LLC. So that's what we're going to do here is that we have the LLC, quote unquote, your business manager, but we still have to tie everything to it. So in this case, pages, we need to tie your page to the business manager. We're going to need to tie your name to the business manager because, again, the business manager is a, is a separate entity, just like an LLC. So here, click on the blue button and let's tie the page. So you're going to, you're going to add a page because you already have a page and then go ahead and type in your page there, your name. And you should see the drop down. Whenever you're typing in anything like this, always look for the drop down. Okay, so go with the drop down, and then add page. And because you're the owner of that of that owner of that page, you'll have you'll have access, or it should yeah, it'll it'll do it instantly. So close. And then so look. Where did I get this name, Caitlin Sells Charleston from? Yeah. Is that we're from gonna, Instagram? No, you would have set up set that up, but we're going to change it right now. We're going to change it right now. So. We're going to change the name of that. We're going to change the name of the ad account. We're going to change. We're going to make make sure that everything is matching one name. So whether it's that name or whether it's Dream Homes and Design, which is the name of your business page, pick a name. We're going to just name everything the same. Um, and it actually starts with the ad account. So now the page is connected. So you're good there. So now click on ad accounts. The mm-hmm. ad account is separate from the other ad manager. So again, if you boosted a post, chances are there was a credit card on file. If you ran an ad before through your ads manager, chances are there's a, there's a credit card on file there. But here we're setting up a separate entity. We're setting up the business manager. So here we need to add a, a card here as well. So go ahead and, and yeah, you can yeah add an account. Actually, Excel now, go with the other option. I think it's the third one down, click on the blue one. You're gonna, um, yeah, create a new ad account. So again, whatever we plan on naming that top left, you have a name, Caitlin Sells Charleston. Whatever you plan on changing that to, which we're going to do right now, name this the same. So whatever that name may be. And this is all, everything we're doing here, you guys, is not public. It's all internal. It's just for you and Facebook. No one sees any of this information. Okay, this is all just the back end. Change the time zone. You can, but it's not really the most important at all. It'll take you forever to go ahead and search, see if you can actually find it. But a lot of times when I'm on this, there's a million different time zones here. 
And I don't like Facebook knows where you're logging in from. I don't know why they don't just narrow it down to just where you're at. They know where we're at. Um, but really that's only important for, for the time that your ads go out or the time that your ad stops. So it's that really one. perfect. EST. Cool. Okay, cool. And then in the next, and then, um, my business, which again, we'll change that name, but go ahead and go with my business and then create. And then again, you're going to, every time, whenever we're setting up a separate asset, that's all, that's all we're going to be running through you guys today is, is these, these separate individual assets that are all part of the business manager. Whenever on any asset, when you see your name like that, click your name. So top left, yeah, click that circle and then bottom right, full control. So you're giving Caitlin, you're giving her the individual full control access to this business manager. So Can now very bottom, no, just the very bottom one, full control. Shade that gray to the blue one. So manage ad account, full control, the bottom one. Shade oh, that. sorry. Okay. Oh, no, you're fine. And then assign. Okay, cool. And then if anything, maybe. Okay. So here's another bookmark. So let's bookmark this page. This is your ad account. So hit the star. Let's put it in that folder. This is your ad account. So here's what I want to really, really, you know, extend to you guys from this point on, like, I'm going to be here for you. So there's my email message me. There, there's, there's no fee. I'm not here to charge you guys anything from this point on whatever the heck you guys need on this, on this platform. I know damn near a lot of it, like 99%. Like I don't know it all, but there's every, every now and then I'm stumped on something, but I've been in this platform for the past seven years and, and, and damn near mastered it. But every now and then something happens where I'm like, damn, I don't know what the heck is going on. You're going to have to reach out to Facebook and ask them. Whenever you reach out to Facebook, the first thing they want to know is your ad account ID number. And that's it right there at the top. So the 314-953, that's your ad ID, your ad account ID number. So that's what it's all going to, that's the first question they're always going to ask is what is that? And whenever you reach out to them, it's always a message. It starts with a direct message. So right there in the messenger, just like, you know, we all message people. It starts there with an actual live Facebook rep. And, and, and they'll ask you what that number is. And, and that's, that's it right there. So this is your ad account. So now let's go down the left. We're, all we're going to do is go down the left-hand side. So um, Instagram account, let's make sure the Instagram account is set up. So right here, let's go ahead and connect the IG. Um, you'll scroll down and you'll just click the blue button, connect your Instagram. Perfect. And, and so now Instagram ads, you guys, for those that, that, that did not know, I'm sure, uh, you know, some of you guys know for sure, but for those that, that don't know, the way you run Instagram ads is all through here. So that's what we'll learn as well is, is how to run these Instagram ads. Um, when you run Instagram ads, they're always separate. So you'll run one ad for Facebook. You'll run, run one ad for Instagram. Um, that way you could track the metrics much more easier than running it all together. Some run it all together, but I'll teach you guys how to kind of, I'll teach you how to kind of separate these ads. So connect Instagram account. Um, see if you can click that blue button. It's trying to pull up my old Instagram account. Okay. That's a window that we're not seeing. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, you're not seeing it. Okay. No. So whatever is there, just, yeah, don't log in with an old one. Just, yeah, log in to whichever one is, is your new one. So now we'll go to data sources. So here is your actual pixel. Now the pixel is what you want to put on websites, on web pages. Now, as you run ads, another, another, another thing that most, you know, most agents do is they'll run an ad and they'll send the click to their full blown website. Like I, I speak to a lot of, you know, clients with, with, with Kate, well, from everywhere, every brokerage really, but a lot of Keller Williams, a lot of Coldwell where they have these fancy websites, right? They have these fancy websites, these replicated websites that they give to every agent and, and, and agents will try to run ads to that page. If your pixel is not on that page, you're, blur you're, burn you're burning money. And that's what I, what I see by the, by, the, by the tons is that a person's pixel is not even on the website that they're trying to run ads to. And that's the whole reason why we're doing all this. So we can track the data. We can track the visit. That happens through the pixel. So as, as we move forward, it's not websites that you're running ads to, first of all, it's going to be a web page. And we'll get into that in our future calls, landing pages and sales funnels. That's where you need to be running, running ads to. It's, it's a, similar, similar to the one that actually exactly like the one I showed you earlier, the listing one. 
It's similar for an open house. It's similar for a seller guide. If I'm running ads, I need to run it to a landing page and the pixel goes on that page, which again, we'll get into in further calls, but let's at least set it up. So click on pixels. We won't be able to add it to a page because we don't have any pages yet, but at least we'll be able to somewhat activate it. So click on add. And again, we're going with the same name for all. So let's take away that pixel name and let's rename it to what you did, what you named the other one, which is what dream. Dream homes. And yeah, yeah. Perfect. So let's name everything the same. So we'll at least have it somewhat, somewhat activated, but, but it's not fully activated until it's actually on a web page or a website. So hit continue. Okay, cool. So we have the pixel named and then um, scroll down click on set up pixel now. And this is something good to do as well. Manually add pixel code to website. So click on the middle one, click right there, click the blue. Okay, so this is something really good to do as well is email it to yourself. Now we're gonna bookmark this page. It's gonna be a pixel bookmark, but if you have anyone in the future, you know, create websites for you or even landing pages for you, you're gonna wanna send them that pixel, right? So even, even yeah, any, any random website, you'll want to put that pixel on that website. So having a copy of it in your inbox is not a bad idea. You know, you're always going to be able to get to it here for sure, but it's super easy to just email it to a developer or email it to your web designer or whatever. Um, so if anything, copy it and just email it to yourself. So by clicking on it, you copied it. So now just hit scroll down. Let's make sure that there's nothing else below. So um, you can, yeah, you can leave all that and then just hit continue. So now it'll just take us to, a, to, to really the end. So hit, yeah, hit cancel, and then that's it. So what we were supposed to do with that pixel code is put it on a web page, um, which again, we'll get into in our future calls. So here, people, right here, you wanna simply add people. So again, just like the other account, we're gonna add people. We're gonna add Caitlin. So, and then we're gonna give full control. Okay, so go ahead and, and right there, full control, manage, manage pixel, shade that gray to blue. Perfect, and then assign. Okay, so now again, each thing is its own asset, which Caitlin needs to be tied to individually. So, so there's that, perfect. And then now, and then what we'll do also is go ahead and, actually I won't have you bookmark it from here. Um, we'll bookmark the pixel from another page here in a, in a couple minutes. So to the left, let's click on brand safety. Here's the newest, the, one of the newest updates with, with Facebook. Before you used to be able to run an ad, boost a post, whatever you wanna call it, used to be able to run it to any website, right? So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm just, yeah, let's just say I'm with, I'm with real T1 and I have a, a random replicated website that every agent has. Yes, that's my website. Yes, my broker gave me that website. That's my website, but technically it's not my website. Like I don't own that.com. It's real T1.com forward slash David. That's not my domain. It's simply theirs. All they did was gave me a copy of the, of the site. That's all any real estate websites are. They're just replicated sites of one. Before you used to be able to run ads to a site like that with any, any domain on it. Now, Facebook requires that whatever website you, you're running ads to, you own that domain. That's why what we tried going over on our previous call was, was matching our social media platforms and actually getting the .com, actually getting the domain, because you're going to need that domain in the future when you start running ads. So here is where you would connect the domain. So you would click on domain, you would, you would add that domain, and then Facebook would give you a piece of code that you install or that you simply paste into the registrar is what they call them of where you bought that domain. So GoDaddy, for example, um, just, no www, just the actual domain, just dream homes. Where do, where do you have that? Do you, do you have it through GoDaddy or where did you purchase? Yeah, it? I just did it last week. Awesome. After awesome. Our call. Oh. Perfect. Let's, yeah. let's, let's integrate this now then. Okay. So Again, this is a huge requirement. Now we're running ads to that.com that we actually own. That's a, an update that's super, super important. Um, so here, what you're going to do on the top, that drop down, you're going to hit that drop down, add a meta tag. We're going to go down to the bottom one, which is DNS text. And all we're going to do here is follow, I believe it's instruction. Actually, do it again. Click on the drop down again. Go down to the DNS text. Third one down, and I believe it's number two that we need. Yeah, so so right here, follow instructions to add this text record. So you're gonna copy, go ahead and hover over that black and copy, yep, you can just click it. Okay, so you copied it. Now open up another tab and go to GoDaddy. So let's log into your GoDaddy. That's a piece of code that we need to install in the DNS records of your GoDaddy account. 
which sounds crazy, but again, if you guys are following along, then, then it's simply just pasting in that code and, and that's it. That gives now Facebook the ability to communicate with GoDaddy and, and, and track the visits of that, that are happening on this domain. From that site, from that domain. Okay, so we added the domain, we added the TXT, we came here, we click on verify domain. And when you're clicking on verify domain, make sure that your drop down is still in the, t is in the DNS text. Because sometimes by default, when you come back here, it's back. Watch, hit the drop down, update the DNS text, hit that drop down, the top. This one? No, to the right, update the DNS text record. Sometimes you'll be back at the top one. Sometimes you'll come back here and you're, you're back at the add a meta tag to your HTML. Make sure when, before you click the green button, make sure you're in that third dropdown. Okay, then you verify. And then, and then at the top, it'll say verify domain. Okay, so that's, that's simply the domain. And again, this is super important, but, but it's the most important once you start running ads. Um, so if you can't get it right now, don't worry about it. Reach out to me. We'll jump back on and, and, and I'll, I'll help, you, help you with it. Okay, so let, let's move on. To the very, very left, let's click on, we're gonna scroll down. And we don't need to bookmark that page, but that, that again is super important. Now here, we're going to click on business info. This is what's super important. And this, this is, this is another, this is one reason why accounts will get, you know, rejected or, or even get hacked um, or, or get disabled is because none of this stuff was filled out. So this part is super, super important. So at the very top, click on edit and we're going to change out that name. Remember, we're going to use the same name for all. So let's get rid of that name. No one sees that. That's, this is all internally. Um, this is the name of our business manager, right? Dream Homes and perfect. And then the primary page, go ahead and type in your business page and you'll see it in the dropdown. Perfect. So click it there and then save. And then here we're going to add all the business details. Now the, the legal name does not need to be an LLC. You can name it whatever you want. You can name it, in fact, the same name that you just named the business manager. Um, but what should be accurate is the address, um, as accurate as possible. And again, yeah, make it as accurate, even if it is your home home address, because again, no one sees this part but Facebook. Um, this is this is to make sure that the, the account is 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 compliant and Facebook doesn't shut it down for any random reason, because all of our info is here. So phone number, website, um, you do not need tax ID, so you don't need to put put that. But everything else, yes. And then we're going to click uh, save. Um, and, then, and then we'll scroll to the very, very bottom. And this is super, super important as well, is simply verifying your email. So scroll down. Yeah, see, so yours has not been verified. So right here, my info, we're going to edit. And we're going to, we're going to put in your email and, and confirm that email. You'll receive an email in the next few seconds. And make sure you, you click on that. Okay, and that's our business info. So that that part was super super important. Um, now what we'll do is we'll we'll move. Yeah, put it again, confirm it, and then and then save. Okay, awesome. So check that email. Make sure you confirm it, and then see. So now everything just changed, right? Now we have your profile picture. Everything is tied to the primary page. And now, now we're in compliant. All of our information is there. So now what we want to do is let's, we have a few more bookmarks. So click the three lines at the top. And now we're going to go to ads manager. Now the ads manager, is going to look the same. So just like we went over a few minutes ago, it's, go it's going to look the same, the ads manager, but it's going to be a separate account. So here, click on no in the top left. So now if you hit that drop down at the top, now this is the separate account. So right there where you see dream homes and design, click on that drop down at the top. So there is the new account. So see more ad accounts. This is the new account. There's your old one, right? So the old one is the ads manager. That's where everyone typically runs an ad from. But again, with the ads manager, none of this stuff could have been set up in the ads manager. We had to do it through the business manager, which is dream homes and design. So from this point on, ads are ran through this account. There's your ad account ID number, the 314-953. This is the, the, the account tied to that credit card. This is where you run your ads. So let's start this page. This is our ads manager. Okay, so make sure it's in that folder. We'll just name it ads manager. Perfect. Now let's click the three lines and let's go the three lines to the left. 
and let's go to let's go to billing. Knowing the billing is super important. Now you just put your card in. You obviously remember what card that is, but sometimes you'll want to change it out. Sometimes you'll forget. Um, this is super important. Click on payment settings. We're gonna we're gonna click on payment settings, and then we're gonna bookmark it from here. The last thing you want to do is wake up and, and Facebook smashed your credit card for 500 bucks and you had no idea they were going to they were going to charge you. That's the worst. So here, having this bookmarked and knowing where you're at throughout the month as far as that balance and knowing what date you're billed on is, is kind of important, right? Knowing that that American Express is on file, this is your billing. Just name it billing. Billing. I lost it. Perfect. Billing. Okay, cool. So we're good there. So now I'll click on the three lines to the left and let's go to audiences. Okay. So again, as I mentioned in it, kind of in the beginning of our call, 99% of Facebook advertising and Instagram advertising is all about your custom audiences. That's what it's all about is retargeting people who are engaging with previous ads. That's what it's all about. So this is where we, we start to collect and we start to create each audience. So click on the blue one, the top one, create a custom audience. And what we'll do here is we'll create, here, here are all the different options, but we'll create our first one around your Facebook business page, specifically around a post or, or ad on the business page. But right here, these are all the different sources is what Facebook calls them on where you can create an audience from. So a website, as I was showing you earlier, as someone clicks on your ad, they go to your web page, they're tracked. That could be an audience. As they opt in, they become a lead, they land on another web page that could be tracked. That's a, a custom audience. So website is what you guys will be building audiences around for sure. Um, for those of you that are doing video, you'll be doing custom audiences around video, tracking those who watch three seconds, tracking those who watch 10 seconds. That's super, super powerful is custom audiences around video. Um, and then what you can also do is customer list. Customer list is super, super powerful. Like I have some clients that have, you know, good relationships with their title reps and, and these title companies will give them list, list of homeowners, list of people who just purchased five years ago, all in that area, right? There's so many lists, so much data that title companies have. If you guys have a good relationship and you can get a, get a hold of a list, maybe people who purchased or maybe people who sold, you can create a customer list in Facebook. And what Facebook can do, let's say, for example, you have a list of 5,000 people who have sold or let's just say purchased or whatever in your area. I could take that list, upload it here, show it to Facebook as a customer list and have Facebook show me 3 million people that are just like them. So here in San Diego, 3 million people, if I had a customer list of 10,000, I'll say Facebook, here's a list of 10,000 people who have all purchased a house in this area. What Facebook will turn around and do is find me 2 million more people that look just like them. And what I mean by look, I mean clicking patterns, like buying patterns, like buying habits. Facebook tracks all this stuff. It's ridiculous. So they can take one individual and, 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 and show us a million more people that have the same buying habits as that individual, which is crazy. It's like ninja tracking on steroids, but that happens through a customer list. So if you have customer lists, that's that's another audience that we'll start to create is customer lists. The other ones are really don't really apply to you. Shopping, instant experience, events, like not even events, like a lot of people have open house events. You don't want to, you don't need to do it here at all. So it's really website, video, customer list. So today, just to just to be able to get to the customer audience part and bookmark it, we'll do a Facebook page. So click on Facebook page. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply create an audience around those who have engaged with a with a post or ad. Um, so right here, it shows us what page we're tracking and then the events, click on that events, um, drop down mm -hmm. everyone who engaged with your page. So here are the different, you know, options within this one category, people who currently like or follow your page. I wouldn't create an audience around those because chances are, if you guys are clicking invite and, and inviting random people to like your page, those are really not people that are in your ideal audience. So having an audience around those people people who like or follow your page is really not, not going to be effective. People who engaged with your page, not really at all. Anyone who, who visited your page, no, because everyone across the country could be visiting your page and I don't need them in an audience. Um, I'm trying to only gather people on that fourth one, people who engaged with any post or ad. So if I put out an ad and that person clicked, they clicked like, they shared it, they commented on it. That's engagement. That's people who engage with a post or ad. That's an audience I want to put, I want, I want to build. 
So here, the audience name and actually the retention. Take that retention to 365, drop that down to 30. And so with that, the retention is, is Facebook will, will simply collect and gather all of the people who have engaged within a 30-day period. And 30 days is kind of the max because a lot of us that click on stuff 40, 50, 60 days ago don't remember what the hell that was. So if I saw your ad 60 days ago and I clicked on it and that was the only time I ever clicked on it and you still have me in this audience, chances are I'm not even going to remember you. But if I clicked on something recently, I would say 30 days max, and, and, and now you have me in this audience, and now you're showing me ad number two, there's a good chance that I might still remember you, right? So 30 days is the max. So leave it at 30. And then audience name, just go to name it the same as the event. People who engaged with any post or ad. Now, now any post or really, no, yeah, yeah, go ahead and copy that. Sorry, any, I'm like one-handed typing. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, take your time then. But, but it, we're not really using the post because you guys have right now, you have a bunch of organic posts. I can go to your page right now and engage with any post that you have on your business page. I'm in California. I, I'm not in your market at all, but I still engage with that post that you put up organically. So it's really not the post. It's really the fact if I ran that as an ad. So if I ran that as an ad, then, then that's, that's who I want to track. So create audience. So, so this is one audience, not the most effective audience, but it's at least an audience. And now we can bookmark the page. So click on the purple done. And let's simply star this page. This is what it's all about, you guys. Again, I, I, I'm going to keep repeating this part. 99% of all this stuff is about custom audiences. So you guys should be starting to collect a ton of audiences right here. People who watched a video, people who clicked on a website. And even, even those who, who watch, let me, yeah, go ahead and click on audiences. Stop share really quick. Let me share my screen again, Kaylin. This is, this is another audience that most fell to set up. So let's say, for example, I'm running an ad on a listing. Right. I run an ad. Let's or let's just say actually it could be anything. It could be it could be, let's say, an open house. Let's say I'm running an ad on an open house. Right. That person clicks. They come here. They're in one audience. Those are that's an audience of those who landed on the Web page, but didn't opt in. Right. That's what I went over earlier. People who simply landed there. That's an audience. That's someone who I'd want to retarget in the future because they clicked, they came over here for whatever reason, they didn't opt in, they didn't, they didn't hit the, the button to, to enter their name and email, but they landed here, that's an audience. But what's also super, super important, here's what happens next. And when it comes to running ads, you guys, it's really two pages. So it's not a full-blown website at all. It's literally two pages. That's page number one. When I click on the button and I enter my name and email, I come to the second page. This is page number two. This is a custom audience. So as people opt in and they land on this specific link, I need to take that link, take it over to Facebook and create a custom audience. What's the name of this custom audience? Open house leads. Why is that so important? Because as I run future ads, I can now exclude that audience from seeing future ads. So if that person opted into my listing, if they opted into an open house, if they opted in and downloaded my seller guide, let's say I'm running an ad and I'm, and I'm, and I'm educating people on what it takes to sell, right? I'm talking to homeowners, I'm, I'm educating people, I'm looking for listings, and I'm giving away a seller guide. This is one thing I teach, either give away a buyer guide or a seller guide because you're not always going to have a listing unless you're really kicking ass. But, but chances are you don't always have an open house coming up. You don't always have a listing unless, unless you do, but, but most don't. So if, if, if you don't, then cool. Run consistent ads to your local area, talk about one topic and give away a seller guide or talk about one topic and give away a buyer guide. This is how you would capture a ton of leads. People just raise their hand, homeowners, hey, I want that download. And they come here, they opt in, right? They come to the second page. This is a custom audience. So again, I'd want to take this link, set up a custom audience under the website tab, which is what we saw there, website. Because these are people who I would then exclude. These, especially when I'm targeting a local area, these people don't need to keep seeing my ad, right? So that's a powerful custom audience. And, and, and on the flip side, let's say, for example, I wanted to run an ad to all these people. You downloaded my seller guide. I can literally pull out my phone. Hey, guys, this is David. Hey, I know a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago, you guys actually downloaded my free seller guide. Hey, were you able to get through it? On page four, here's what I was talking about. But I also noticed you haven't scheduled a call. Right, that's a very specific message going to a very specific group of people, all because I was able to track them from a simple link. This is custom audiences. 
So it's either you're tracking those who watch the videos, either you're tracking those who land on the web page but didn't opt in, and you're tracking those who actually opt in. Because another reason why this is so important, this link of the second page is so important on the ad side is to be able to track our cost per lead. Without Facebook knowing that link, how are they going to be able to, to, to let us know what the cost per lead was? They know how many people landed here. They know how much we spent. Therefore, we have a cost per lead, right? So, so that's where these links, and that's why you have to own this .com because we have to be able to, to integrate that and, and track that on the back end. So go ahead and share your screen again. We have a couple more bookmarks, Kaylin, and then, and, then, and then we're done. So that seller guide, that thank you page is what I was trying to explain. That would be a custom audience. So it's all about collecting all of your audiences right here and using them to retarget with future ads or exclude from future ads. Okay, so click on the three lines. We have, um, I believe we have, we have, I think we have two more bookmarks. Click on events manager. And let's bookmark our pixel from over here. So we're going to click on events manager. We're going to, we're going to hover over this triangle to the left, click on done. Um, yeah. See, so the pixel, because the pixel wasn't on anything, we haven't put it on an actual page. That's why your, your, your pixel page looks like this, but go ahead and star this page. This is where we'll be able to get our pixel. So go ahead and yeah, give it a star bookmark this one and name it pixel. Now, once we actually take that pixel code and put it on a web page, then this page will open up and this is where we get our pixel from. So whenever you need the pixel for future websites, you would grab it from this bookmark. Okay. Um, now hover over the hover the hover over the blue triangle and then click on custom conversions. And this will be our last one. Custom conversions. So this right here again is based on the thank you page. So bookmark this, we're not gonna be able to set up a custom conversion just yet because the custom conversion is based on the pixel and it's based on the web page. So because we don't have that just yet, the button isn't gonna light up and we cannot create a custom conversion yet, but bookmark it. Um, and, then, and then let me explain real quick what a custom conversion is and then, and then we're done. Let's look at our bookmarks really quick, Caitlin. What do we have in that folder? We should have seven of them. Actually click on the folder. Um, we, we have our, we have our business settings, our ad account, ads manager, ads bill, billing, audiences, pixel, and custom conversion. That's it. So all this other crap in the, in the platform here, you guys, none of it's necessary now. Yeah, none of it's necessary when it comes down to the metrics, when it comes down to, to, to actually, um, tracking the analytics of it, of an ad, then you can look at that on the ads manager dashboard. You don't have to go to a separate tab. You could, but you don't, you don't really need to. Um, there's only really a few metrics that we're looking at cost per lead, how much we spent, um, um, and how many leads came in. It's, it's really those three basic metrics. So you don't need to go into a full blown reporting of it all. You can view it from the ads manager. Um, so at the end of the day, it's really just filling in as we move forward. It's all about filling in these, these, these seven, we're going to fill in the custom conversion. We're going to fill in the pixel. We're going to fill in the custom audiences around websites. Um, we're going to run ads through the ads manager. The ad accounts tied to the credit card. The business settings is where your Instagram and domain and, and business info is at. That's it. There's nothing else around these seven. Um, now, in closing, the custom conversion is the most, most important. Let me share my screen and explain this really, really quick. Um, when, when, when an individual is running an ad, let me go back to, let me go back to, to Facebook. Um, okay, so actually, let me just go through here. Okay, cool. So as you're running ads, you guys, here's the bottom line. As we're going through the newsfeed and we're just seeing what our friends are up to and seeing what everyone's posting, and all of a sudden we come across a sponsored post. This is a Facebook ad, okay? There's the text. There's the video. This is a 56 second video. He's tracking me. I watched it for 10 seconds. He's tracking me. I watched it for 13 seconds. He's tracking me right now. When it comes to, to, to our business, real estate, we're really running ads for one thing. And that's a lead, right? I need to capture a lead. I need a listing lead. I need a buyer lead. I need a freaking lead. It's all about the lead, right? But what Facebook needs to know is they need to know what page, which is, which is that thank you page, they need to know what page you're ultimately trying to get people to. So if I asked you, if I asked you, okay, guys, there's the ad. What's the most important thing we're trying to do? Most would say, well, David, I'm trying to get them to click on it. Okay. If that is the objective, 
Facebook just gave you what you wanted. You wanted people to click. There goes your click. You have to be super specific. Facebook is super, super specific. Our objective was to not get them to click. Our objective was to fill out the form. That's what our objective was. So in this case, what this guy's doing, this is one single page. All he's asking for is email, right? So as he's running this ad, let me just put a random email. As he's running this ad, his whole objective is to get me to put the email, click on the button, and come to the second page. That was the number one objective. It wasn't, the number one objective wasn't to click on the ad, come to the landing page. That was not the objective. The objective was to get people to this page. And the only, this link here at the top, this link here at the top is gymlaunchsecrets.com forward slash teed dash application global 552. That was the link. So as he goes and sets up his Facebook ad, yes, he tells Facebook about the first page. As people see the ad, yes, they're going to know about the first page. But what he's doing through his quote unquote custom conversion is he's telling Facebook about this link. This link is the Facebook custom conversion. So with a seller guide example, with an open house example, with a listing example, you got the landing page and then you, and then they fill out the form and then you got the thank you page. It's the thank you page. This is his thank you page. That link is your custom conversion. So without setting that custom conversion up around that link, Facebook has no idea that that is your ultimate goal. So therefore, when they run ads, they may be running ads just to people who watch a video. They may be running ads to people who simply just click and don't fill out a form, right? So it's all about being super specific. We need to give that link to Facebook. That is our custom conversion. That's how you capture leads, by letting, people know, letting Facebook know that it's the second page that you're ultimately trying to get people to. That's your custom conversion. So that's why as, as we move forward and as you know, some of you guys will start running ads, some of you guys may, may hold off for a minute, but those of you that start to run ads, it's all about getting landing pages, some type of landing page software where you can control this link and we can create our own page. That's what Facebook ads is all about. Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, TikTok ads, it's all the same. It's all these two pages, landing page, thank you page. The thank you page is your custom conversion. Okay, so hopefully that made sense, you guys. That's pretty much it for today. Any questions whatso whatsoever? How is the best way to contact you if we have questions about doing that? Yes. Um, right there in the chat, you should see uh, my email. Um, okay. Let me let me send it again. But David at agentmastery.com. Shoot me an email. I'll send you over my calendar. We can always jump on and I can help you guys, you know, individually and, and really knock it out for you guys. Okay. Thank you. Cool. You're so, so welcome. Any questions, Vicki? Anything else you guys need? No. Um, well, I, I just want to make sure that everybody knows, like, first off, um, so David was so kind to give this to us as a, a bulk package and we appreciate you. You're so um, and beyond that, like he is, he's offered that everybody can, can, can contact him separately, which is huge. That's, that's a lot of busy work. He's, he's used to getting this fee as just one agent. So, um, you know, so I just want to make sure that kudos David, thank you for that. Yes, yes, and, um, and then take him up on the offer as well. It's like, just, you know, like he, he obviously isn't doing all of this so that you guys don't ultimately get the goal. So, you know, reach out to him. Um, and if you need his contact information, let me know. But let's get this all up and running. Because for me, the thought is, is that we all have this all cohesive. That's, that's a way to create that whole branding. Yes. So, and, and, and on our very, yes, go for it. So it's landing page, then thank you page. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So landing page is an important component to get to the thank you page, correct? Yes, Obviously, they have to go through first the and foremost. Okay. Yes, right. yes. So, so that's why that, that second link, yes, that's the destination. I call that the destination. We're running an ad. What is the destination? Where is the destination? Where are we ultimately trying to get people to? It's the thank you page. Right. And, and people can only land on that thank you page if, is if they fill out the form. Right. You got to fill out that form. Right. Okay. That's the only way you're, you're not going to Google the thank you page. It won't pop up on Yahoo. No, you got to fill out the form. So letting Facebook know that is, is your custom conversion. That's the most important. So, David, in order to even run an ad, should we wait until our website is up and running? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, Many different, there's many different softwares out there. Most of them run about a hundred bucks a month. And that's why I say, you know, only, only get one if, if you're really going to be consistent with ads. 
Um, but most of them run about a hundred bucks a month. The one that I recommend, it's it's the same hundred bucks a month, but it comes with the three tools that you're going to need. You're going to, number one, you're going to need a landing page software. Number two, you're going to need an email auto responder. And then number three, you're going to need an online calendar. Those are three tools and those are normally separate. So a lot of landing pages are just landing pages for hundred bucks a month. Um, but again, the one that I recommend, it comes with the other two that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to need, because as people opt in, they have to be nurtured. That lead needs to, needs to continue to receive emails on your behalf. And, and they're not coming from you physically. They're not coming from your Gmail. They're automated. Yes, we have to set them up, but they're automated, right? So a listing lead, they're going to hear from me for the next 10 days, an open house, same thing, seller guide, they're going to hear emails. Email automation is, is where your appointments come in on the back end. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in the, the third tool, watch, let me, let me share this last part. And I know we went over, but this, this part is, is, is the software. So as I take someone, as I take someone to a landing page, mm. there's the landing page as they opt in and they enter their name and email, an email, the email autoresponder responder would have triggered that email instantly. So, so the moment that person opts in email, email number one, just went out. Hey, Dave, this is Victoria. Thank you so much for inquiring on our open house coming up this Saturday and Sunday. Let me tell you a little bit more about the property and why you're going to be so fired up to get here, right? Whatever. That's email number one. Now here's here. And so that, that's tool number two, which is your email autoresponder. The third tool is your calendar. As that person lands on this second page, and it could be for an open house, a listing, a buyer guide, a seller guide, whatever. As that person lands on this, on this second page, what I recommend and what I teach is that this needs to be a, a simple video a 45 second video on your cell phone. Again, it doesn't matter what they came in on listing, open house, buyer guide, seller guide. It doesn't matter. It's the same four bullet points. Number one, I'm thanking them. Number two, I'm introducing myself. Number three, from this simple cell phone video, selfie style. Number three, I'm telling them to check their email because I just emailed them all the details. And then number four, I'm going for the close. I'm going for the appointment. Number four, I would say in that video, hey guys, and by the way, this property is obviously not going to last. So if you click the button below, it'll take you straight to my calendar where you can schedule your private showing. So the third tool is the calendar, whether it's an open house, whether it's a listing, whether they opted in for a seller guide and they're just, they're a homeowner simply looking for, for seller tips. I'm trying to go for the appointment. It's all about the appointment, right? So that third tool is the calendar. And so X amount will schedule an appointment right here on this thank you page, but the majority, let's just say 80%, eight out of 10 of them will not. And that's fine. Two, I'll take two out of 10 any day. I'll take one out of 10 any day when you're scaling up numbers. I'll take one out of 10 for sure and be super successful. But let's say, let's say, let's say eight out of 10 don't schedule a call here. Those are eight leads that are now in my email autoresponder. And these emails that start to go out would be optimized with my calendar. Right. So so if this was if this was a seller guide two days later, hey, Dave, this is Victoria just wanted to follow up. Hey, I know a couple of days ago you downloaded my 2022 seller guide. Hey, have you got to page three on page three? I'm talking about the importance of staging and how much value that can bring to the overall. Right. So these are automated emails that will go. And by the way, Dave, I'd love to talk to you. So if you have any questions, click the button below, take you straight to my calendar where you can schedule your best time. So what you would have is you'd have 20, 25, 30, 35 emails preset, ready to go out every three days. And in each email, there's a link to your calendar. So we'll get there when we get there, which is really on our, on our, on our fourth call right now. This is our second call and then our third call. Setting up the business manager was so, so important because on our, on our, on our next call, what I want to do is I want to run a like ad. So for, for any of you, for all of you guys, actually that, that, you know, are able to get up the links, right? So here's, here's my friend, Candy. There are all of her links. When I come to her business page, what nine and a half, and, and don't ask me how I got the half, but what nine and a half out of 10 people have on their business page is a low like number. So the very first ad that we run next, which, which hopefully is our, which, which, which is our next call is a simple like ad. Look at all of your colleagues. Everyone has 200 likes. This part, this like number is so important for the branding of this page, just for the credibility, right? Because people need to come here and see a big number. You'll go to pages and you see 110 likes, right? What I want to show you on the next, on the next call is how to run a simple like ad, spend maybe, I don't know, 25 bucks and take that like count from your existing 200 to 2200. And that's a one-time ad. It's not an ad you run all the time. 
but, but that'll be our next call is we run a, a Facebook like ad. And so having the business manager, which, which is what we cover today, having all that set up is, is, is the first step. And then we come in and on our next call, run that like ad to just really boost that number. So now our page has all of our links. Now everything is branded. There are all of our, our social media links and this like count will be through the roof. And, and really it's, it's for the credibility of the page, that higher like number. David, who was the company that you recommended for the hundred dollars a month? What I'll do is I'll send you a link because I actually have a partnership with them. That's why I'm able to train you guys for free and not charge anything because I, I have all the funnels done for you. And, and that's another reason why I'd want you guys to email me to get my calendar link. In fact, let me just put my calendar link here. Um, so there is Zoom call with Dave. There is my, my link to my calendar. So the, 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 um, the actual software that I recommend, there's a 14 day trial. We're not there just yet. I wouldn't activate it just yet. Um, but when we do get there, I give you all my time for free. I have all these funnels already done for you. Like I have a listing funnel, a, a buyer guide funnel, a seller guide funnel. I have all these funnels already done. So for those that actually jump on the software with me, I give them all my funnels and I give them all my time. And I just train you on te and teach you how to, how to, you know, put them all together. That's what I built my whole YouTube channel around is, is training agents, how to use these funnels. Um, so, yeah, so, so email me if anything, if you want to jump on the software now, you can for sure email me, but I don't think we, we need it just, just yet. Let's run this like ad first. And then after that, then you guys can go maybe activate a 14 day trial to really maximize the 14 days um, because we're kind of far away from running that ad, but, but getting the trial up is super important. And maybe we can do that on our next, on our next call. Cool. Thank cool. you. Thank yes. you. Yes. You're so, so welcome. So, um, any other questions, Vicky? Are we good? No, we're good. Are right, you guys? So I'm pretty sure you have something scheduled, Vic, right? We, I think we have. Yeah. So we have, um, we only have one more to schedule. So we have the fifth and the seventh. Awesome. Both are at 3 PM. Awesome. And, and, and it, we have one more. once we run this like ad, which is our next call, I'll walk you guys step-by-step step how to run that ad. Then our next call would be activating a 14 day trial for the software. Because, because if anything, our calls may be extended just due to the fact that it, 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 it takes some time to put these pages together. Even though I have everything already done, there's a little learning curve. And that's what we'll spend some time on is putting together the pages, putting together the calendar, putting together your email autoresponder. Those will be a handful of calls right there as well. So, um, so yeah, so that'll be like call five, six, and seven pretty much. And then we'll go into running ads for those of you that want to run ads. Cool. Sounds good. All right, you guys. So I'll be, I'll be an email away or a message away um, if you guys need anything. And um, thank you so much for your guys' time. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye.